Hello, uh, those who are here as attendees, hopefully joining soon. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair. I am a teacher of about 20 years. I've been teaching in Canada, in Scotland, in England, and in Poland. And over those years, I've seen lots of good and lots of bad and lots of ugly. Uh, I've had a chance after being in the classroom to engage with a private company called Sundog, and I wrote their learning sequence for mathematics and for spelling, as well as supporting the, the, the reading aspect of their site. That was fantastic. Um, I've, beyond that, been part of this, and I now have a consultancy company that is supporting other places to do the we can um, share learning and have learning in bite-sized pieces for, for students and for teachers. Now, my, my grid here is showing I'm at top right, so I'm going to go vertical and see how we go. Above me is David. David, do you want to say who you are? Now, do you, yes. you listen to me? Yes, go, go. Yes? go yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, good evening to all. Uh, my name is David Barroso. I am from Colombia, the North Coast. I am teacher in uh, technology and informatics. Uh, I have 13 years in the education uh, with the student of the um, 12 and 15 years old. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, I'm sorry because my um, English level is it's not bad, it's not good, but um, it's very important, it's fantastic connect with you. <laughs> my daughter Mary Angel, uh, my company, um, it's, a, it's a pleasure for me to be the interlocutor for the friend of Amer uh, Latin America. I know that many people see us um, this time and um, the language will not be an impediment to share this wonderful experience. And um, I thank you, the entire team of the community for this opportunity. Um, my interlocutor is in Spanish for my friend of Latin America. All right, we'll go, we'll go on now from there. I want to say too though, one of the things that David shared before is that he supports students with special needs and his goal with his teaching is to make sure that everyone he works with has the opportunity to succeed, which I think is amazing. So thanks so much, David. Pam, do you want to go next? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my name's Pam Jones. I am. I have um, over seven years' experience teaching computing, and been head of department, head of year, and have thoroughly enjoyed integrating technology into uh, the classroom. I, after having my children, I went. I decided not to go back and to now become self-employed and I run computer clubs in primary schools and I love seeing the kids in experimenting with technology, seeing how it works, looking at how they learn and how they learn through experimentation as well as obviously structured learning. Um, I now work freelance content developer, have been working with a company called Sam Labs of late, uh, which is how I know Mark, Michael, um, and we have been aligning their, uh, well, their piece of kit that they use, which is block-based coding for, uh, and visual coding with a piece of kit, which uses, uh, is, which is Steam in the classroom, which is really opened my eyes to how to use computing on a broader level and have more, more there which uh, having more of a topic and more of a theme, which I've really enjoyed and love seeing it develop. And, and that's me. All right, Brad, do you want to have a go at that, please? Let's hear from you. 
Yes, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Brad Gothier. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Sitecast.com, and our platform is uh, has a main goal of lowering the barrier of entry for people to code, uh, namely students and, and junior developers. And uh, along the way, I've I've participated in all sorts of STEAM committees, and currently I've been helping a handful of schools in the area uh, upgrade their curriculum that helps to think more uh, future forward about what they're teaching the, the kids. And it's been a, a, a wonderful ride to get to this point, and I, I thank you for, for having me. All right, please, Kathy, go ahead. On you go. Let's hear from you, please. Um, yes, my name is, can you hear me? Can, can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Kathy Roby, and I'm from Iowa, the state of Iowa in the United States. I currently teach technology, and I have a STEM lab along with that technology teaching. I've been teaching for seven years. Five of those years, I was an art teacher, um, and then I switched over to technology, which I, I can see how they really relate now, and I use a lot of my art teaching into the technology. I also, prior to teaching, was a graphic designer, so I incorporate a lot of that also as far as, like, working, you know, just different techniques I did in the business world. Um, so I teach kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, so I teach about 400 students. I have each class I have for 30 minutes a week. So it's a challenge, but it's a good challenge. It's a good thing. So that's it. And lastly, uh, Thomas, you know, we, some of us have heard of you for, for already today, but a whole bunch likely haven't. So if you want to toot your horn, on you go, man. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll keep this short. Um, I'm Thomas Rogers. I'm a teacher in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I have had about uh, six combined years of official teaching in both private and public classrooms. Uh, I've held a variety of different uh, responsibilities and leadership positions uh, throughout that time as well. And primarily my focus has been the humanities grades 7 to 12, so that's social studies uh, and English language arts. And very often I'm the person that uh, is doing that really weird thing with the kids down the hall that's making all the noise. And very often that ends up being something that is uh, either STEM or STEAM related, even though they're not terms that are very common in my area right now. That doesn't mean that the work isn't uh, being done. Now, there are, there are five questions and there are one, there are six of us here. So I figure since I'm going to ask the first question, I'm not going to be the first one to answer. So if we go to like this, I figure it's kind of democratic. I'm going to, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Again, I see at the top, I see David, I see Pam, Brad, Kathy, and Thomas. So how about I'll ask the first question and then Pam can go first and then the next one down the way. Or again, if you want to just jump in too, please. By all means, add a comment, because I think this is, again, it's not so regimented in that way. So the first question was, what does a STEAM classroom mean to you? Okay, so you want me to answer first on this one? Okay, so I'll get it going on this one. Um, to me, STEAM was something that I hadn't really utilised or seen much when I was in the classroom. But now looking at it, it's something that we did so much. And I think without realising, STEAM is adding more to a topic, adding more of a, a theme to it and expanding it across the subject areas and um, being able to utilise different topics and adding in science. Technology is obviously something that I use all the time without realising you're using English. Obviously, you're, you're building up on their vocabulary, vocabulary. Maths, which Michael will tell you, is not my strongest point, I'm sure. Um, but you, without realising, obviously, the binary element was something that I, I'm fine with. But 
yeah, maths is not my strong point and uh, it's something that I would definitely want to integrate more. But the STEAM classroom to me is building the topic, building the theme, having it a wider area, not just having it based on coding for me. Anyone else? Want, you can just jump in if you like, and you, we could do that, or we can just go down to the next person's brat if you want to go next. But if you're like, oh, I want to talk now, please just jump right in. I'll add to that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Well, let's go, Kathy, first, then, okay? <laughs> I'm a talker, so anyway, um, I would add that in my room, it's not. I, I always say it's more of a verb, it's STEM as a verb, so it's more not necessarily the science, technology, math, and engineering, it's more the critical thinking, the communication, collaboration. So my stu students are working in those areas. Um, I think I was thinking this morning, it's like, you know, STEM education, we've been doing it for a long time, and now it's called them and everybody thinks it's so new, but teachers don't realize they've been doing it for a long time. Um, and and it is, it's a great way to just teach those 21st century skills, things that students are going to do out in the working world. They're going to communicate, collaborate, and all that stuff. So that's more what mine is geared towards. A lot of design engineering um, lessons um, that are group lessons and stuff like that. So now I'll let Brad go. My side of things, so I'm, I'm coming from, so on my side of things, I'm coming from an outside perspective as I haven't been a, a STEAM teacher. However, I've worked with a lot of STEAM teachers and our platform, you know, is used by um, educators and, and students as well. And so one of the things that I've noticed is that the, the trend needs to uh, get to a point where the STEAM classroom isn't thought of as a classroom, but more of the the lifeblood of the entire uh, school system, where whether it's English or or the science class, all of those the the entire curriculum needs to begin to revolve around what is uh, what we now think of as STEAM. So, like our high school here, um, Adam Raditz, he's a, a great teacher, and and he I was talking to him yesterday about this, and one thing that he brought up was that that you know, they can go and explore what through their their uh, Z space, which is like an augmented reality thing, and through the the uh, Google expeditions, they can go and, and see what it would be like to be a underwater welder. But at the same time, when they're underwater, they now start to see fish and they have the opportunity to talk about um, ecosystems. And, and there's all sorts of ways that that cross curriculum can start to become more of a STEAM school rather than just a STEAM classroom. And so I think it's important that we start to uh, look at what technology and science and math and all this stuff starts to uh, become that true um, connecting string that, that really is the lifeblood of 21st century education. I'll jump in here, I guess, if I can. Um, so when I'm looking at a, a STEAM classroom, I'm, I'm always hoping that it's more of a, almost like a practical exercise. So I like to think of it as taking the skills outside of the vacuum of a classroom and showing the student that the work that they're doing in a subject area does have a realistic application. And I think that the challenge of doing that sometimes is almost part of a reflective practice that we as teachers need to use to say, well, is this a skill that my students are going to benefit from in a application in, uh, you know, technology engineering or whatever they decide to do? Am I equipping them or is this something that I have to do because I have to do it? And in that case, you know, how I treat that material and how I introduce it or how much time I spend on it is going to uh, you know, be influenced by that kind of internal dialogue. Lastly, David, can you give a go? Okay, well, uh, for me, uh, a STEAM classroom 
is the space where the areas that could transform education and society of the new generation convert. This is the center of the organization of knowledge to train professional who re require the new digital transformation uh, for Latin America. Uh, un aula STEAM para mí es el espacio donde convergen las áreas eh, que podrían transformar la educación y la sociedad de las nuevas generaciones. Estamos en un mundo globalizado y es el centro, el STEAM de la organización de saberes para formar los profesionales, los estudiantes que requieren la nueva transformación digital. Estamos ante un cambio y ese cambio lo hace posible el, el aula STEAM. Thank you. All right, Pam, do you want to go for the second question? Do you have it there or do you want me to read it? Uh, I've got it here. <clears throat> okay, go. so question two. What do you see as the greatest importance for including STEAM in learning for students? Do you want me to go straight into or pass it on? I think for what me, think? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I think the greatest importance is so that they see the true meaning behind it, so they understand why they're doing it definitely something that they can see the bigger picture i think that's a key thing in anything that they're doing i think that kind of links on to what was being said before as well is that the bigger picture anybody want to add in on to that one yeah I'll, I'll jump in here so you know that bigger picture to me is the practical application of of skills and right now as i'm sure many teachers do they have a, a growing population of gamers in their classroom and finding ways to uh, leverage uh, this new, well, not really new, but it's definitely a much more publicly available and even publicly acceptable media. 20 years ago, if you were a gamer or somebody that worked with computers, you were kind of on the periphery. But now that that's becoming even more mainstream, letting them know that you know these skills that they're that they're learning in school can still have practical applications for even pursuing these things and very often in language arts especially which is what i'm working with this year i have to keep reminding students that no this is less about you know verbs and grammar and dry stuff like that that's that's you know how you do it but the what you're doing and that, you know to go off with what pam is saying is is you're communicating and your ability to share those ideas and the methods that you use to share those ideas is going to be, you know, fundamentally transforming for what opportunities are available uh, to these students. Does anybody else want to add in on that? I think Michael's ducked out, I think he's having trouble there. Does anybody else have anything else to add on that one? Kathy, Brad, David. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have some thoughts on that. So I was talking to another one of our um, STEAM teachers at a, a grade school near us, and he uh, emphasized that the gamification side uh, that you're mentioning allows for these students to learn incredibly complex skills while at the same time not really knowing that they're learning at the same time. So it's, it's a pretty fun way that gets people engaged by you know, the scratch or the, the different like Minecraft or the different ways that the students can learn uh, very complex uh, technology without really thinking too deeply about it. But I think overall the greatest importance is just the fact that of of what Steve Jobs says is that um, he famously said that that coding teaches you how to think. And uh, Nate over at, at the school there, he has borrowed a lot of the ideas from MIT and they're doing a, a big heavy emphasis on design thinking. And so that concept really helps uh, push them into a, a much better track when it comes time to, to get into the workforce. So one thing that I always like to say is that there's only two outcomes for, for uh, future employees is there's either 
the ones that get controlled by robots or the ones that control the robots. And so if they don't start now and start learning truly how to control the robots and, and code and think in these, these uh, algorithms, it, it really will start to um, promote a much better way for going through life. And that's one of the, the heavy emphasis of STEAM and one of the, the big importance of it is just getting their, their brain around how do you get this little thing to go two steps down and one over, or how do you get this button to do this thing halfway across the world? It's really fascinating, and that's, that's ultimately the most important aspect. Kathy, David, do you want to add anything on the staff? Uh, we are in the second question. Yes. Okay. Um, starting be saying that this is not the tool that will allow a student to learn. The greatest importance lies in the student desire and interest that they see the meaning of learning in a STEAM classroom and where the future of the new generation. Apart from that, uh, it is important that the learning of different disciplines should be included, included in an in, integrated way so that it is more precise and trigger innovation and creativity that hardly happens in regular class. Inicio diciendo que no son las herramientas las que permitirán el aprendizaje en los estudiantes. La mayor importancia radica en despertar el deseo, el interés de los estudiantes, que vean lo significativo de aprender en un aula STEAM y hacia dónde va el futuro de las nuevas generaciones. Aparte de ello, es relevante, se debe incluir en el aprendizaje diferentes disciplinas de una forma integrada para que sea más preciso y desencadene innovación y creatividad, que difícilmente ocurre en las clases regulares, especialmente en Colombia. Okay, Kathy, do you want to answer that question? Question number two. Um, actually, you all said it really well. Um, I don't have much to add. Again, it, it, I think it's giving the students a purpose, like how can I use this in the real world? A lot, a lot of my classes, a lot of my lessons are practical applications. I heard someone else mention that. Um, it's just so they know that, why am I doing this? Well, you know, why, what's the purpose? So again, it's a practical application. It's just, it's a way of thinking. It's, the design thinking, um, kind of just what pretty much everybody stated. Okay then, uh, shall we move on to question three? Um, what has been your greatest support in attempting to embed, embed STEAM in learning for students and or teachers? Shall we give you, Kathy, the chance to speak before everyone takes your ideas first? <laughs> um, oh gosh, I, 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 I'm fortunate to work in a school where my principal, who is my administrator, I don't know if that's what they call it in, you know, in your areas, but um, she's very supportive. I am the one that came up, I, I just started STEM, technically STEM teaching um, this year, and she's been very supportive. My parents are very supportive. I have parents that work for companies that want to partner with us. They want to, you know, donate items. What do you need? We'll give you what we need. I have one parent who is donating um, 12 Raspberry Pis to use in my classroom. So I'm just like, to me, that's thrilling that they're on board. They're excited. At the same time, I have to be excited to let the parents, you know, be excited also and the kids. The kids go home and they talk about we did this in school and it was so exciting and so fun. I had teachers coming to me, what are you doing? What kinds of things are you doing? And just getting to work with the teachers in their classrooms. So it's, 
it's not an isolated thing. I don't want to be an isolated room where it's a special, it's just STEM. It's like I want it to be integrated. Again, it's, it's a school culture. So just having everybody, the support is tremendous. So that, that helps when my administrator is supportive. That's, that means a lot. So that's kind of where I'm at in mind. Yeah, if I can, I would love to echo that because it really, like, STEAM and other things like it that might not necessarily fall into the realm of, like, traditional teaching practices, you can't really do those unless you have the support of the community around you, whether that be a department head, a principal, a district supervisor, or superintendent. If there is resistance or if they don't necessarily understand the value of, you know, this is you know, practical learning, and it has a direct and very real application, that can be a huge barrier. And sometimes it's a case of you, you kind of need that perfect storm of not only the support above, but you also need the buy-in from below. If you, you know, bring some of this stuff to the classroom, but for whatever reason, that class just does not mesh with that application of STEAM tech, whatever it is, that can also be a, a bit of a barrier as well that we can often forget is that the, the right technology and, and the right approach uh, for one class might be wildly different for a completely different class, even in the same building. One other thing about the, uh, the, the support, I think that is worth mentioning is the students themselves. Uh, it's pretty fascinating to me, every every class that I've talked to, all of the different, um, you know, just the, the different uh, schools in the area all have some student that just really has embraced the STEAM mindset. And they're teaching teachers, they're teaching other students, uh, community members come in and they help them. It's fascinating. And uh, the the ability for these students that are at the exact same time learning this stuff and are able to instantly turn around and be a, a leader as well is, is incredibly rewarding to uh, almost everyone involved. And so it's pretty fascinating that um, while there are the, the teachers are invaluable, the students are, are a huge asset in order to get the, the overall buy-in. Yeah, I think um, one of the other things to think about is actually other teachers as well. The, the support, even on the internet, if you're trying to find something, the amount of support out there if you're stuck on anything has always been phenomenal. And it's something that I've always drawn on if I'm sitting late at night trying to think of how to integrate something. It's, it's there, it's out there. And I think it's something that it is a support network. And it's amazing how teachers pull together to do these things. So I'm just going to jump in for a sec there. I got cut off by my internet company, which is always fun. I've gone this thing, I guess it's eight hours of for video and audio. I think that Virgin Media just said, you've had enough today. So it, the whole thing crashed, which was, which was not nice. Can you catch up what question this is on so I can actually contribute today? We're on, uh, yeah, we're on question number three. And it's just down to you and, then, and David left to add to that one, I think. Unless well, anyone else got anything else to add? You go ahead, David. I'm going to go after you, okay? Okay. Um, well, I believe that my main support has been to show what we can achieve with a little effort and dedication uh, that with the union of the teacher of STEAM areas, excellent results can be achieved in the teaching learning process. Uh, in the student, uh, awaking the dove and concern that is the source of knowledge and propose alternative solution to the problem of their community and their peers with special educational needs. 
eh, for Latino America. Eh, considero que mi principal apoyo ha sido mostrar lo que podemos lograr con un poco de esfuerzo y dedicación, que con la unión de los docentes de las áreas de STEAM se pueden lograr excelentes resultados en el proceso de enseñanza-aprendizaje. En los estudiantes, despertar la duda y la inquietud que es la fuente del conocimiento y que proponga alternativas de solución a los problemas de su comunidad y de sus compañeros con necesidades educativas especiales. Thank you. Okay, I'll just jump in too, just briefly then. I think one of the things that sometimes teachers neglect with regard to support is the parents. And I think that if, if you have a tool that you're using or, or again, a collaboration you're talking about, it's one of the things that you, Brad and Thomas and Kathy all pointed out was that amongst yourselves, STEAM isn't a noun, it's a verb. STEAM is about collaboration. STEAM is about bringing things together. And Pam, you too, how you connected all the subjects together to be this, this unit of one thing. And I think when we're talking about education, we have to include the home as part of that process. Yeah, the kids come to school and for a number of hours, they are in our care, but then they're not. And they're actually not in our care for more time than they are in our care. So I think we have to also reach out to parents as the support that they have to be for us. And one way to do that is to share regularly. But one other way to do it is to share successes that we've had and the learning that we've had happening over the course of a term, over the course of a year. And there are a number of technology, technology things we can do to, to, to do that with social media or other places, but just saying hello outside and say, we're trying something new. Your daughter should might talk about it at home and they seem really excited about it give it a go, see what you think. And that sort of, I, I guess it's involvement. And, and like you're saying, collaboration is so crucial to this verb of STEAM. Uh, who would like to read up question four? I mean, you can go ahead, I don't mind. Okay, I'll do question four then. Question four. What roadblocks have you faced when implementing aspects of a STEAM classroom or education setting? Now, what Pam and I talked about too before this happened was really the nitty gritty. What are the, what, what parts of implementing specific aspects of STEAM? So that could be either a subject area or it could be a process of the whole STEAM idea. What has been something that has blocked you uh, bringing your idea of what STEAM is to learners and to others. Anyone go ahead. Okay. Pam, please. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that um, one of the things that I found the hardest is actually getting teachers teaching different subject areas to knit together on one subject, one collaboration across the school it's not as easy as you would like to think that anyone would like to think it is. It's really hard to get everybody singing from the same hymn sheet to getting the, the whole idea, working together on one project in an ideal world. Um, I've not seen it myself. I, if it works elsewhere, fantastic. I just, I find that my hardest aspect is to get everybody on board on one thing. David? <laughs> Okay. Um, well, um, some of the obstacles I have faced have been resistance of the teacher who do it all today age age do not be on new development in education. Many do not want to innovate or leave their comfort zone for the time they have left as teacher. Uh, second, fewer resources in technology for being an educational institu institution with public management. Uh, student recruitment to teach, just want to play and not learn the topic uh, that will serve uh, for life. 
eh, in Spanish. Algunos de los obstáculos que he enfrentado han sido resistencia a los docentes, que por su edad no le apuestan a las novedades en la educación. Muchos no desean innovar ni salir de su zona de confort por el tiempo que le queda como maestros. Pocos recursos en tecnología por ser una institución educativa con manejo público. Y estudiantes reacios a las enseñanzas solo quieren jugar y no aprender los temas que les servirán para la vida. Gracias. Um, I can go ahead and add on this, and then I actually have to leave early because my school is doing a STEM fundraiser, so I have to head off to that, so that's exciting, but I think the roadblock for me has been, like Pam said, other teachers in the building, getting the whole school to think of it as a culture. I have a teacher that's a floor down for me that continues to complain that there's too much noise in my room, the kids are out of control, and it's like, no, there's real learning going on. There's real, um, it, it's, you know, it's real, it's exciting. And um, so just, I would love to, like, again, have that whole culture. I'm working on it. It's, it's baby steps. It's baby steps to get there. And I think it will get there as the kids are showing the engagement, the excitement, uh, parents. So I, I think it'll get there. It's just kind of a slow go to do that. So. Yeah, to, just to build off of what's being said, I think probably one of the biggest barriers that STEAM has is being mistaken for uh, edutainment. Um, we often may confuse the two, especially those that are the outside looking in, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, this is, you're just entertaining them, where's the learning part? And they don't necessarily see that program of studies or that curricular outcome 1.3.6 uh, being personified in a way that's immediately familiar to them. And that is challenging, right? And I have no doubt that when I get to the end of my career, I'll probably turn around and say the exact same thing. And, you know, at that point, I'll see myself out. But it, it is a bit of a stigma, I think, that a lot of the, the STEAM-related things can, can go that way. But at the same time, it doesn't even need to be something new and flashy uh, to necessarily fall under uh, STEAM in my mind. Anything that could be potentially, you know, strange or weird or unorthodox, but it works. And you are able to uh, show and evaluate uh, those same curricular outcomes is going to help break that barrier. But I think that we do run the risk of a lot of the content that we do being mistaken, unfortunately, is edutainment. So that's, a, that's an excellent point. And I think one of the areas that uh, leads to this confusion is it just comes down to uh, something that I say in, in business is that any challenge is usually just a miscommunication. And one of the big things is, is STEAM. Like, the, the word STEAM, is it STEM? Is it uh, makerspace? Is it shop class? You know, there's, there's so many different uh, understandings of what this tech training is that um, a lot of people just get confused by it that are looking at it, at it from the outside. And so one of those things is just the, the fact of what is it? Is it a fab lab? Is it, you know, wh what truly is STEAM? I think that's one huge thing. But in, in our district, uh, one of the big aspects has been staffing. There's uh, a huge uh, gap between having the teachers available. Um, like the high school here really could use a fab lab coordinator. The um, different grade schools all need uh, someone that is dedicated for this. And there needs to be liaisons and just all around that community buy-in there needs to be more help uh, because the traditional teachers, while they're doing their best to learn how to use this augmented reality or the Google expeditions or, or what have you, there needs to be that, that someone that can help bridge the gap. And so that's part of it. And then on the flip side of it, something that the reason that I've been helping is around the funding as well, when uh, there's a lot of grants available, but Overall, the funding is very limited in terms of getting the, the necessary equipment in there. So for instance, one of the grade schools here in uh, North Lakeland, 
that grade school has all Chromebooks for all of the, the students, but the Chromebooks don't run CAD, for instance. So if they want to start using CAD, what are they going to use? Then they have to go and, and use like what two computers that might be able to run it and so there's a huge gap in in what can be done and what can be done based on the funding and the the help associated with that i think that's really really important too with regard to resources as you're saying one thing the resources the physical resources you have as well as the training for the teachers i think it's always nice when a government decides we're going to have this as part of our curriculum and they let they put it in the lab for the teachers who've been teaching for X number of years, and they never had any computer science training for themselves. So now, now as it happens in England, there's a new computer science curriculum, a fairly new computer science curriculum, and you have a, a great majority of teachers in England who haven't ever taught computing science. So I, I guess that there's a necessity there for, for ed tech to come and help out. But at the same time, ed tech aren't teachers. So you have this way of using a resource to support uh, computing science or other tech industry learning, but without the, the gap, the bridge that you're talking about, without that bridge, that gap bridged with some sort of educational input by people who know and who can put it in small chunks, those who don't have a clue, it's, it's, it's an uphill struggle that no teacher without the training can win. So I think, again, when we're talking about the roadblocks faced here, one is training, time, resources, and they all come together in a very, very similar ball to, to say the teachers who are being tasked with this aren't ready, aren't willing because they're not ready, and are likely afraid. So it's, a very, it's, very, uh, uh, it's not a very comfortable place to be for a lot of people who are being tasked with technology. And I'd say particularly those computing sciences because they are for teachers to teach still relatively new. It can be very hard to actually ask for help sometimes. One of the biggest things that I think teachers face is if you admit that you need help or you need training or something, sometimes the support is not there and can be seen as you have a weakness and that can be something that stops teachers asking and looking for the support elsewhere, something I've seen in the industry. Our last go is our last question is here now, and we're doing that badly. There's 10 minutes until we get cut off by Tim, but we have a bit of a window there. So the last question says, what are your goals for the future with STEAM, either for you or for those with whom you work? So we're thinking about here again, what are your next steps? Uh, how do you see yourself getting there? And how do you see others around you coming along for the ride? Should we go David first this time? Okay, um, the goals proposed for the future are in, integrate 100% of teacher with the STEAM methodology, uh, a student trained in programming language with high logical mathematical performance and trained in engineering and art a student project um, for a student with a special education needs that respond to problem in their community and um, if god allowed is reco recognition recognition <laughs> in the local and national scope for begging pioneers with the implementation of the proposal eh, in Spanish. Las metas propuestas para el futuro integrar al 100% de los docentes con la metodología STEAM, estudiantes capacitados en lenguajes de programación con alto desempeño lógico-matemático, afianzados también en ingeniería y las artes, proyectos de estudiantes para estudiantes con necesidades educativas especiales y que respondan a problemas de su comunidad Y si Dios lo permite, reconocimiento en el ámbito local y nacional por ser pioneros con la implementación de esta propuesta. Okay, well, I'm going to comment on something that, that Tim's actually put in here 
Uh, actually, Brad, you want to go ahead, please, because you just commented on Tim's comment. I'll let you go. Uh, yeah, Tim uh, brought up a really good point and something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, considering I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur, is uh, Tim asked, how does it equate to having the invention and entrepreneurship side of things as well? And that's actually something I was going to talk about is the goals of the steam is is not just to introduce people to new technology or new ways of of how the world works but rather what is truly happening in the real world and so uh, a couple of the the schools in this area love to bring people to actual workplaces and and allow them to tour it and see how this stuff is actually being used that's huge um, and that's one of the goals of of exposing these um these newer ways of working to the, the the students and on the flip side it's also bringing the community inside so uh in wisconsin here so i'm in i'm in wisconsin usa and uh one of the things that is part of the grants that got the fab labs in the area is that they actually have to open up the fab lab to the community and so one of their goals is that they want to have entrepreneurs and even kids come in and, and, and bring business ideas to the table where uh, there's this really cool laser engraver that, um, that's at the high school that they can go in and, and engrave uh, custom logos into a, a mug or whatever it may be. And so it's, it's bridging that gap, like we're saying, where there's the, the side of things where it's, it's business, um, where there is an actual use case for this because you know, we live in a, a capitalist society. It's, it's, we, we, it's not just learning this stuff. It's actually how do you apply it to the industries that, that need it the most. And that's, that's uh, vitally important to, to paint that picture for the students that it's not just these, these concepts, but it's actually the application of the concepts. Yeah, I think one of the the big things that I would like uh, to see, at least in my case, is lowering the perceived cost of um, implementing this stuff in the classroom. And when I say perceived cost, I don't necessarily mean uh, financial costs, but those are certainly a part of it. But the cost of, of time or, you know, the mental fatigue, that sort of thing, a lot of what STEAM uh, teachers do, we sometimes make it look a little bit uh, too easy or too hard. And I think that people are paying attention to that and they're necessarily, uh, you know, not necessarily comparing you against themselves, but they are sizing up the task and they're thinking, well, that person's really good at that. That's why it's so easy for them. And like there, there is that little bit of distance, but introducing it in such a way or even writing your own materials uh, for your lesson plans in such a way that it, it shows how accessible it is. So the next time somebody says, oh, you know, that's really cool, but I don't think I could do that. Well, it gives you the option to say, well, actually, I think you can and I'd love to help you with it. Um, it it's just a good way to kind of gradually bring those people in because I don't necessarily think even if at a staff meeting one day, uh, you know, the, the talking head stands up and says, we are now a STEAM school and you will all be STEAM teachers, that, that that's just going to get pushback or people are going to do what would appear to be the bare minimum and then they're just gonna go right back to what they're doing. So, you know, the implementation and bringing people into this kind of different method of teaching is one that's got to be genuine and perhaps not from uh, the top down if it's to truly be successful. Well, I think that idea when you're talking about cost, I think it has such a, a wide a wide definition too for schools. I think when when you're talking about cost and the times are too, I think one thing that has to be addressed for teachers, as I said before, was that that bridge that you have, the gap for the learning. I think what teachers have to have in the, the, the short term is a breakdown of standards and to know what it means to write an algorithm. Uh, you know, algorithms are things that we do every day. We don't code them when we go and we make our sandwich or we, we fold our clothing. 
we follow a set procedure every single time though. And that becomes effectively what that is. It's, we're writing it for our head and automatically carrying it out. I think that if we had examples of small steps, small learning steps of toward a skill and then having skills toward a, a standard, that for teachers like you're suggesting, Thomas, writing your own stuff there, this is how you can achieve what I have done over the course of a couple of weeks. Here's a first small step. If you accomplish that, there's only so many more to go before you can say, yes, I can do what you just did. So I think that for, for educators in the know or for tech people in the know, they have to get a way of presenting this big standard, this big woolly, vague standard written by some government policy person or by some very lofty education person with, with uh, connections with the government. It's an important step to have that woolly thing become manageable learning success criteria that teachers can then share with their classes and then can say, yes, my kids are STEAM kids or we do have a STEAM class or we do have a STEAM school. Then that talking head as you spoke of will be telling the truth and won't terrify the teachers who are listening to it or the parents who are listening to it because they'll understand that you're right. Right, do you want to close things off, Pam? Then, if you want to give your answer there, and then I think as it goes, this will be the last thing said because Tim's going to jump in and kick us out because of the time. I think I like I like the point that Tim and Brad were making about the um, what's the term? invention and in entrepreneurship, the steamy. I really like that. I haven't heard that before, so that's something brand new that I've heard. Obviously, the obviously those extra terms. I think it adds a whole new level to it. It makes it, as we've said before, the bigger picture, making the kids put it into perspective, seeing how they can take it to the next level, put everything they've learned into one place and how can they innovate it further? How can they take it to a new level that has not been thought of before? Because is that not what we're equipping them for, is to actually take it out there and use it and put it into jobs that are not there yet and get them thinking about where are the gaps and what can we put in there and I love the fact of the entrepreneurship because I think that is a skill that kids want to learn and it's something they want to get into because everybody wants to be a millionaire and everybody wants to find that gap and fill it and that's what gives them the uh, I like that and I think that's something that would be great to grab onto that's my final final comment. Right, well, I'll say thank you, everyone here, for coming in. It has been a marvelous session, I think, despite losing my connection for the internet for 10 minutes or so, running out like a chicken with his head cut off. Did solve it in the end, though, and things came back to us. So thank you for sticking out. Thank you for carrying on. Uh, I was a bit worried, but you're all amazing people. Thank you for sharing your talents. Thank you for sharing your time. And let's stay connected. Let's increase our connections to this. Thanks again.